One, that as soon as you have the ACT license, which means you have the ability to develop extensions, um, you, you can always find Iron Python Console in this list. And that's the first thing that we're going to talk about today, is kind of your direct link into the API. So the Iron Python console is, uh, you know, is is basically just treated as an extension. It uh, you can default it as as being loaded, like I've done here, um, and so it's always going to be there for me. So let me close that because it's already checked, which means the next time I open Mechanical, it will be available as an extension in Mechanical. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to come in here and pick, um, you know, let's just do static structural and just do some basic uh, basic thing. So I'll add some pre-existing geometry that I have, like just a, a simple unit cube, a box, and then I'm going to launch Mechanical. All right, so Mechanical is launched, and uh, a couple things uh, show up here. First of all, we talked about Iron Python, and here it is. This is the Iron Python extension and its manifestation inside of Workbench Mechanical. Let's just look at what Iron Python does, because uh, I can say definitively that understanding and using properly the Iron Python console is the most important aspect of successfully using ACT. Uh, it makes your life so much easier. Uh, just, just so I can demonstrate something here, let me start off. I'm just going to get a simple mesh on this part. Okay. So Iron Python, what it does when you launch this, when you when you access this extension, what it does is it launches a window here, and this is known as the Iron Python console. Okay. Now we're going to get into later exactly what an ACT extension is and the guts of it and everything um, with you know the XML file and the Python file and how they work together. But let's not worry too much about this right now. Right now we're just going to focus on the API, the the interface um, that allows you to access things in mechanical, kind of under the hood, like I've said. Okay, now everything I talk about here is in the documentation, but if you get proficient with the Iron Python console, you don't even need the documentation as much as you might think you would. So, first of all, um, I have a choice here to say which extension I want this Iron Python console to interact with. And one of my choices is just Iron Python console itself, okay? And since it's the only real extension I have loaded, uh, it's just going to interact with itself. I, I can talk later about what it would mean if there was a different one, but just quickly I can say that you know if I had a different extension loaded, maybe it would have a variable saved in it that I wanted to access in this environment, and I would have to switch down to that to, to access that extension's specific variable. But in general, when it's just on Iron Python, I just have a general access to mechanical and can do things. So what do I, I keep saying do things and access. Let's actually look at it. So what's an example? Well, this is an API. So I'm going to issue calls to the API, and it's essentially going to return things. And that's kind of the various, you know, the, the way that various things like this work. So let's start with um, the, be the beginning of essentially all ACT commands will be that. Capital E lowercase x, lowercase t, and then capitals API. And that's saying that you're going to access the extension API. Um, Python, which is the language that all these commands are in, is essentially, you know, it's an object-oriented language, and so when you hit the dot, you're essentially going to get a list on the left here of the different, um, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, just what can come next, okay? Without getting too much into the programming and all that, this is what can come next. And you have a list here. All right, of, of all the different things you have access to. Now, this is the first moment where I kind of, you know, what I mean when I say um, the Iron Python console can help you avoid needing the documentation as much as you might think, because it can guide you quite well. So let's say that I want to issue a call to this API, and I want to find out how many elements were just created in that mesh that I made. Okay? So I'm going to start off with ext API. The next thing I'm going to want there is I'm going to want to go into the data model. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down to data model, click on it, or you can just put another dot, whatever. Um, and it's going to move in and it's going to give me the next list. Okay, so I'm saying extapi.data model. Data model is a very general thing in mechanical. Um, you know, 90% of the calls you issue are going to be to the data model because you're saying I'm entering through the, ex through the uh, you know, extension API. Now I want to look in the data model, which is essentially where all information is stored for this interface. You know, that's kind of a crude way to put it, but it's generally, ac you know, generally accurate. And then from in here, I'm going to say, what kind of data do I want to access? Well, there's, there's a couple ways to skin this cat of getting into the mesh information, but one of the easiest ways, um, you know, would be to go in. Let's go in through the analysis, okay? So I'm going to go in through the analysis list, and this means analysis list means these things right here, okay? In, in, in mechanical, the environment branch right here, uh, is is basically known as your analysis that you're working on. And anybody familiar with mechanical will know that you could have multiple of these. You could have a static structural and a modal and something else. That That's fine. This is going to be my analysis list. Now, obviously right now I only have one, 
but let's imagine that I had several. Either way, I need to specify which of the analyses I want to use. So it's Python. So I'm basically treating, I, I've got a list here, and I know it's a list because it's called a list, and it wants a number from me. Well, I want to do the first one. Python index is at zero, so I'm going to put zero in, uh, in brackets there and hit dot. You know you've executed the command properly if when you hit dot, you know, you've got more to do here. And sure enough, here we go. I've got more to do. So, all of a sudden now, I can come down here and notice one of the things is mesh data. And you might be looking at this list and thinking, gosh, there's a lot, you know, how am I going to know what to do? Well, th there is a lot. I mean, you, you have access to, you know, a lot of stuff in here. But um, over time, you know, read through these, see what kind of information you have access to, use the manuals, and you'll become familiar with, uh, you know, how to do this. And I, I, I guarantee you, if you're using ACT in no time, you'll, you'll be able to fly through this interface. So don't, you know, don't be intimidated by how much there is. So one of the things is mesh data right here. So I click on mesh data or I enter mesh data in some way, and I hit my dot again. And here we go. I now have, you know, a list of all the different things I can query the API regarding mesh data. You know, what can I look for? Well, right off the bat, there's our answer. This is what we're going to want. I'm going to say that I want element count, and this should give us the number of elements in this model. Just to review before we execute the, main, execute the command, we're saying ext API through the API, go into the data model, go into the first analysis, it's mesh data, and get the element count. And when I hit enter, Sure enough, it returns 1,728 elements. Let's confirm that by coming over here to statistics, and sure enough, 1,728. It agrees with what's being shown in the details here. So there we go. Very simple case of using the Iron Python console um, to access information, uh, you know, from under the hood in Mechanical. Um, I think one thing needs to be explained at this point because it's pretty crucial. Um, this API is very powerful in the sense that you're able to move up and down. Uh, you're, you're able to move, you know, kind of vertically throughout this tree, and uh, that might be confusing the way I just said it, but it'll under you'll understand it in a moment here. Look at what I actually did. I said I want to go into the API, into the data model, and I want to enter through analysis list zero. That means I came in right here. Well, I skipped the mesh. If you're familiar with this mechanical tree, you know that it's, you know, it's logical. Um, you know, you, you start off, everything falls under a model. That's, that's basically everything that you're doing with this given model. Um, that's the data model, basically. And then, you know, you've got your geometry, your coordinate system, your mesh. And the mesh is obviously common to multiple different analyses, okay? So if I had analysis list 1, 2, 3 here, whatever, you know, it's all the same mesh because it's in the data model only has, you know, one, one mesh that you will access in general. So um, what I've done here is I've entered through analysis list, but I've actually moved upstream into mesh data and then into the element count of that mesh data. I could have also moved downstream here by saying analysis is zero and gone and found something in this analysis settings. Okay, that would have been very doable as well. Um, but that, that's kind of the power. You, you often will enter through this analysis list, and we'll talk more about how, you know, I programmed in a zero in here, but in your extensions, you know, it would be re very rare for you to program in a zero. Uh, and we'll talk about how to get around that so that you can say dynamically go into whatever analysis I'm currently working on. So, so you know, that's kind of the general idea of using the Iron Python console. Um, let's hit one other topic that's, uh, that's important because it comes up often. Let's do the data model and let's go into the analysis list. Let's go into analysis list zero again, but this time I want to look at data objects, okay? A lot of information is stored in what's known as data objects. So when I say data objects right here, I get, a, I get a, several different ways that I can access them. Well, first of all, what are data objects? In general, data objects are items that fall in this tree, okay? Now, that's a very general statement, what I just made, and, and you could certainly kind of argue with it in certain ways, but I'm trying to keep it general and on the top level here. So let's say that I wanted to get something out of this, um, you know, analysis settings. I could get it out of uh, the data object for this analysis settings. So uh, there's several different options. Get by ID. Every, ID, every object in here has an ID, and, and um, you know, every data object has an ID. Uh, I, I don't know what they are off the top of my head, of course. Um, I don't know yet anyway. I could choose to get them by name. I could choose to get a list of these things first or whatever. Well, let's just get by name. I know the name in here. Um, there's a whole issue with names and, and the, the difference between names and captions and things. Uh, you, know, you have to get familiar with that, but we'll keep it simple for now and just say by name. So open quote, uh, sorry, open parentheses, and then single quote is fine. Analysis settings, close, and then I'll know that I've done it accurately if when I hit a dot, I get a list here. And I do. So I got a list of things, which means that it understood and it accepted analysis settings here. So I've got, you know, more things to do. Now what's neat is data options is a, is a, you know, is a thing, is an option again. Because 
that data object could have its own data objects, okay? For example, this data object has a data object under it, okay? This is a data object of this guy. So it's kind of confusing how that works, but you'll get used to it. Um, you'll get used to it and see how this kind of works. But for now, I'll say I want to see analysis settings, okay? And I want to see all the property names that are under analysis settings. So I have property names listed here, and I can just hit enter. And it's going to show me a nice big list of all the different properties that I have within analysis settings, okay? And I can access all of these, of course. It's giving it to me as a list, okay, as like a, a list of strings. And so, you know, these basically, if you look through, will correspond to essentially all the things that you can set in the details here. So I'm going to hold down control and hit the up arrow to re-access what I had typed in the last time because now I want to go into a little more detail. I want to get a property value, okay? So I want to get the property value of one of these things. So I'm going to ask for the property value of solver type, one of the names here, okay? And sure enough, it comes back as zero, okay? So solver type is listed as zero. That you will find if you get into it that that corresponds to you know, I could if I if I change this really quick to direct, for example, and I reissue that command, all of a sudden it's one, and I'm going to guess that iterative is going to be set to two. It's the kind of stuff that I don't necessarily know off the top of my head. I, I do a lot of ACT programming. I don't necessarily know that off the top of my head, but you just you figure that out as you go along, and then you'll realize, okay, um, you know, this is this is how it works basically. So so that's an example of pulling information out of the analysis settings um, and things like that. Now, a question that somebody might be thinking right now is. What if I want to set things like this? Um, that, that's tricky in ACT. There's generally a way to do that almost always to, to, to modify things like this, but uh, you know, it can be a little harder. So let's, let's, let's just look at an example really quick though of what happens if I were to say solver type and just say equals and say, um, and say you know, zero right here. Okay, so I just issued it. It didn't return anything. Um, if, I, if I come in here and I refresh the display, we'll see even still it didn't change it. So this isn't necessarily a setting that you can just change. Um, that's kind of more, you know, that, that's a, you'll come across things that are easy to change and not. There's advanced ways to change everything that's a little beyond the scope of what I'm trying to do here. But uh, for now, you know, if you're trying to set something, try it there. And if not, you know, kind of look through the documentation or contact us at, uh, you know, at ANSYS. We can help out. Whatever. Okay, I don't want to spend too much more time on Iron Python because I think everybody now just has a general idea of how it works. Oh, I, I do want to make one more comment though. There is the top right box that I haven't talked about yet that I want to mention um, because it's important to understand it. So as you go along here, this top left box is your best friend. It shows you, uh, you know, what objects you have access to or what, you know, kind of what things you have access to as you step down the line of the API. Um, in general, what shows up on the right here is uh, is going to give you hints in terms of the the format of uh, you know the format of information that is uh, that is expected by the API. Um, for example, right now I'm saying get my name analysis settings, and it's saying okay, you you are you know you are going through a data object collection right now from the mechanical extension API. Um, you'll see a lot of different things in here. Uh, you know, I, again, kind of keeping with the informal nature of what I'm trying to do here. Sometimes it's confusing. Uh, you know, I, there's there's no doubt about that. Sometimes it's confusing, and you'll see multiple lists of things claiming that something is both, you know, maybe it's a, it's both a string and it's some kind of data object. But um, you know, just as a tip in general, just look at the top item and try to get an idea of uh, what kind of information is either being asked to put in or not. Um, and, and once you've navigated around Iron Python enough, you will, um, you know, you'll you'll get more familiar with it and understand how to use it. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's Iron Python, extremely helpful when developing extensions. So let's put it aside for now, and let's actually talk about, uh, you know, talk about that. Talk about ex uh, developing extensions. Oh, and by the way, I minimized it, and you see that it kind of lives down here. And at any time, I can I can bring it back or maximize it or whatever I want to do. I can always go back behind it and do things. That's, that's just kind of the way. I'll just close it for now, though. Okay, one more thing I wanted to point out before moving on is the ACT development toolbar that uh, is showing up there next to the Iron Python console toolbar in the upper left. Uh, that, that shows up when you turn on debug mode. Debug mode is uh, something that you can activate from the workbench, uh, from the workbench page. You just, go to, you just go to Tools, Options, and then in the Extensions section, there's a checkbox for, checkbox for debug mode. When you turn on debug mode, uh, that toolbar is activated, and what it allows you to do is those those two green circular arrows. When you click on them, it will refresh all the extensions you currently have activated in Workbench. So, for example, if you have a bunch of, uh, you know, if you have one or multiple uh, 
uh, scripted extensions currently activated that you're actively working on and developing, every time you make a modification to the XML file or the Python file, you can click that button and it will reread the extension. So uh, it's basically you know crucial as you're developing to make a change and, and reread it and refresh the screen. Um, that prevents you from having to close the entire Workbench application and reopen it. So that's very useful. Next to that button is the um, ACT log file button. And when you click on that, it'll just open up the ACT log file. The log file shows everything related to ACT that's happened. It shows you a bunch of information. For example, it'll talk about an extension being activated or things like that. But what it's really good for is that that's where errors show up. So if you have an error in your uh, Python code or in your XML or something, uh, you know, you will get clues as to what's wrong in that error file. And in that box that you're looking at there will light up red uh, when that when when an error is thrown and there's text to be to be looked at. So that's the ACT development toolbar. Uh, it's very useful for um, you know for, for actively developing your extension.